what uh, are you presently uh, preoccupied with? I, I have uh, some organizational interests. I am in charge in a, of a, a large, very large program, interdisciplinary program of research on the national level on the basic problems of the physical planning of Poland. And I have my own research interests, which at the present moment concentrate on a settlement system, urban system in particular, and on migration problems, migration modeling, simulations, and the genesis and, and the mechanism of migration. And I think uh, we have get some interesting result. In this last field, we are now collaborating closely with the IASA Institute in Luxembourg in Austria. Uh, there is this problem of uh, mathematical modeling of migrations. So these are my present scientific research. But of course, this is, in a certain way, late development. And in another way, it is coming back to the, the, the origins by which I started my planning and then research career. That is by education. I'm an architect. Yeah, I, I uh, remember that you told me that when we first met in Stockholm uh, at the uh, IGU conference 1960. That's not so common. How did it uh, come that you moved over from architecture to geography? Yeah, I, you see, I, being active in youth organization at the time of when I was at Technical University, I, I became socially conscious and interested in social problems. <coughs> so when I finished my studies, I decided that town planning is the most social direction in, in architecture. When about was that? It was 1934. Uh -huh. And so I started, first I, I started to work in a, a planning office, regional planning office for Warsaw. And there, there was another element that I was becoming, I was asked to, to concentrate on the research, on survey studies for the regional planning. I moved that later on to Krakow, but this is a problem that even in professional practice, in town planning, I already at uh, this problem of, of going in, in, in surveying the, the, the problems and in organizing research. The next step was that uh, in wartime I, I, was re I was in England and released from the army to teach planning, urban and regional planning at the Polish School of Architecture connected to the University of Liverpool. And I was asked then to prepare a report on the location of basic investments in a kind of theoretical report, which could be used for the planning of a construction, post-war reconstruction. And uh, out of that, uh, I spent three years going to literature and various materials, organizing them. And the, out of that grow, has grown my doctoral thesis. And of course, I use the, the, this material, this information, when I returned to Poland in 1945. And then my position was in a certain way established because for a country who just cut off from the world for six years, a man who has brought in the various concepts and materials was of certain importance, again, at, at one certain status. Uh, I, I may say that I introduced for the first time then in Poland the, the, the Kristallas concept of central places. Oh, Did so, you know Kristall at that time? Uh, I, no, I, no, I met him later on. Uh, yeah. And uh, the problem of regional uh, regionalization as they were studied in 
in or were presented in England, then the problems of locational theory and uh, is as amusing that in, in, in at that time in, in England I I prepared a bibliography of of reports and studies done for by the National Resources Planning Board in the United States. And even to this day, this is the most complete bibliography yeah. published. It's interesting. Yeah. So, in this way, I, I, my position in research was established. And later on, when there was a discussion whether I should uh, opt, I, I was engaged in, in planning bodies, but uh, it was quite clear that I should move to. to uh, higher education and to the research institute and there was a discussion whether I should go to architecture or to geography. Architects did not want me to to, to be with them because they consider me to be too theoretical, not sufficiently interested in, in, in design and in, in everyday work. And of course Leszczycki, who was uh, the organizer of post-war Polish geography invited me to join the Institute of Geography of the Polish Academy of Sciences. This was in 1953, and this was final mm -hmm. crossing the floor was, mm -hmm. was done. Your dissertation was that in uh, architectural planning or geography? No, it, or it, it, was, uh, it was half economic. This again, I see. Half economic, half, half geography. Uh, and did you... Uh, 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 finalized that in England or in in Poland. I have written in England, but I presented the uh, doctoral thesis in Poland. For it was uh, published in Polish. Yeah, yeah. I see. Now uh, we could stop perhaps a little bit uh, at your period in in Britain. Who did you work with there? Did you ever meet Abercrombie and those people who? <coughs> I I know his work. I did not meet them personally. From geographers, I, I met Roxby. I see. Yeah. Yes. And I make later on also, and of course, out of the planners, I make Lord Holford, oh, yeah. which was professor at the, at the time he was professor in University mm -hmm. of Liverpool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of, uh, I, later on, I met Professor Darby, and of course, a man who has uh, make uh, some some impact on my development was Dudley Stamp. I see. Did you know him uh, quite well? I did. Oh, yes, we did know him yeah. quite well. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I, I was able to to to, to get uh, Kostowicki, a, a place for him in London School of Economics after the war, and he met with Dudley Stamp in a certain way. He, he followed his, his uh, direction in the land utilization studies. Yeah. In, in fact, in the beginning, uh, uh, Kostowicki was concentrating on the stud urban studies, the studies of urban functions, and I was trying to organize work on land utilization, surveying of land utilization. But then we changed. Uh, urban problems were always, for me, closer because of the town planning yeah. interest. And he has he has turned into a great specialist in agricultural geography. Yeah. But he get to the problems of agricultural geography by land utilization studies. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now uh, we uh, let's take a further step a step back. Then how did it come that you uh, choose architecture in the first place? Did you have any? Uh, as a young person. Uh, you see, I, 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 my father was a professor at Krakow University. He and was, his field was? He was chemistry. Uh -huh. chemistry. So he was a scientist in the uh, English meaning of yeah. the word. Yeah. But he has enormous humanistic culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, as he was taking care of us as children, with my older sister, we uh, he has transmitted in a certain way this very wide field of interest uh, in, uh, in human and social sciences and in in uh, sciences, natural science, exact uh, 
physical and mathematical sciences. Uh, at the same time, uh, our whole family has a, 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 a tradition of engineering and, and technical education. So uh, I could not make very well make my mind what I want to do. And my, I, my father wanted me to follow his, his steps. And when I finally uh, had chosen architecture, this was kind of declaration of independence. Yeah, <laughs> I see. I wanted, my, my father was quite a strong personality and I wanted to be different. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, uh, I guess you are also a strong personality. And, but uh, this uh, choose, the choice, architecture, is, uh, is uh, trying to, uh, to fuse. Yes. When I was very young, I, I wanted to be a, 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 a polar a geographer who studies polar questions. <laughs> so, uh, I, 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 in fact, uh, in, in my fa circle of my family, I met the famous Polish geographer Eugeniusz Romer. Yes. He was, he was a personality, a real personality. <laughs> uh, and, of course, I remember him very well, uh, but uh, except some geographical jokes he told in my youth, I don't think he has really had greater impact at that moment on on my on my development. No, no. Yeah. This, uh, later on, only when I studied to study geography, I met him then uh, as a geographer. When I organized a research for planning mm -hmm. post war, mm -hmm. he lived. He died, I think, in 1953, and in fact, uh, I was partly responsible for the themes of his last studies published. Mm -hmm. What was that? It was the originalization of climate in Poland. Oh, I see, I see. Now, the, have, when you came in uh, closer contact with the uh, geographers, uh, you sort of came into it without the traditions, I guess, mm -hmm. the, that uh, the other geographers had. Yeah. Uh, does, uh, had this um, influenced your your view uh, of your discipline? I mean, um, is it? Oh, I, I, I am always stronger on economic geo and cultural human geography than on physical geography. I learned physical geography by attending various conferences and meeting other geographers and listening to their lectures and presentation. But I have never a system. I had never a systematic training in physical mm -hmm. geography. So uh, perhaps I am a little one-sided, and this sometimes is approach to me. Uh, on the other side, having uh, you see, I worked quite a long time in the planning commission, and I, I attended there for a few years the meeting of the. Commission itself at a political level, and I have to say this was the best economic training. The, the, the president of the planning commission at the time was a, an eminent economist, mm -hmm. and I, I would say this was the best seminar I have ever attended in my life on economics. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for a few years, I had the uh, honor of collaborating with. Kalecki, who was a great uh, man of, with Lang, a great man in, in Polish economics, and he has an international position. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was a, a fantastic man, really, extremely interesting, and a uh, man of extreme intelligence. Uh, out of geographers, of course, uh, Crystal Theory has. has played a, a, an important role in in development of my concepts and ideas. And uh, several times in uh, in my life, I, as I told you, in war years, later on in the 50s, when uh, uh, Leszczycki asked me to work on the problems of economic regionalization, and then in the 60s, when I stayed for half a year as visiting professor in in the University of Pennsylvania. We have met then at... Yes, uh, I remember, yes. yes. Yeah. Pennsylvania State. Yes, yes. So, 
in all those elements, I gathered and had I reviewed the, the, the literature. And it always ended with a, a presentation of, of a study of the development of concept in this field, industrial location, economic regionalization, functional structure, and, and, and settlement network. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, I think that in fact, I, I, I published a study on the development of the concept of urban economic base and functional structure, and I, I think it's one of the best of my work. Mm -hmm. that in a certain way, I can say that one man has specifically influenced me, but uh, this kind of working, uh, reviewing the development of concept, has always was very important in, in, in my both in my development, in my research interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you, obviously you had a theoretical inclination already as an architect. Yeah. Yeah. And of course I found <coughs> one thing which is element is you have always to go back to the sources of certain concepts. Because these concepts as presented by others are very often uh, uh, deformed. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Yeah. And you, you don't see the, the, the real value of the concept until you, you realize how the author has uh, seen it in context of other mm -hmm. elements. In a certain way, in later developments, the concept is isolated. It has no background. That's no true. Yeah. One of the, of the elements why, why I think uh, I came to geography, why I feel well, among geographers, I was always interested in the place of something or some phenomena of some persons, a group of persons in the environment, in relation to, mm -hmm. to the other. And this is one of the elements why, why I think I left architecture, that architects are trained now, I think it's very bad really, that they see themselves as, as as artists who create work of arts and don't pay any attention, almost, almost no attention to the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, they isolate what they are doing yeah. from the environment. Well, as almost uh, all uh, academics do in the special art fields, there are very few who, who, who um, uh, yeah, and, emphasize the context. Yeah. And my uh, success as organizer, coordinator of, of interdisciplinary research was, I think, lays in that, that I'm always seeing people and problems in the environment. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, could you, have you reflected on uh, when this um, emphasis um, began to develop in you? Because um, it's rather unusual, isn't it? Most people in science rather try to specialize in. I, I think few. it was kind of, of, of a, a tendency and ability which was growing, but it was always there. And perhaps it surfaces in this very wild humanistic atmosphere in which I was growing. I think, in spite of my declaration of independence, I have. I owe very much to my father. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So you, you feel you have this combination of science and humanities mm -hmm. from him. Oh, yes. uh, where did you go to school? In Krakow? In Krakow, yes. Uh -huh. But I studied architecture at Lwów, uh -huh. because there was no school of architecture at the time in uh -huh. Krakow. Uh, the schools in Poland at that time, did they specialize? Or you had both mathematics and Latin, and or how? Did it? In, the, in high school, there was, uh, after the First World War, there was this kind of uh, the, uh, several tendencies to, to. There was classical high schools with classical and humanistic, and there were mathematical. And, uh, and, uh, and I was in mathematical, but yeah. uh, at the same time, because of values, my own interests and tendency of my father, I privately. Learned Latin, for instance, and yes. languages, and uh -huh. so uh, I, I get a, in a certain way because of this care of my parents in our education. I get a wider education that was provided in 
type of this high uh, school uh, I attended. Yeah. Uh, uh, and now uh, the language is taught at that time. French uh, has traditionally been very strong. Uh, in of Poland. course, I started going to schools at the end of the First World War. So originally this was the Austrian part of yeah. Poland, so this was uh, German. Yeah. Mm. But uh, as as I I came to the moment where I should start to to uh, to learn other language, the, the, the war mm. was ended. The Pol Poland gained independence, and the German language went out in a certain mm -hmm. way, and this was the French which was most popular at the time. But uh, the director of the high school I attended uh, wanted to have an English class. And he, in a certain way he forced me, uh, against my will, into going to English class. And I think I, I would never realize that he did not realize that he makes a kind of a basic decision in my life because because I learned English in the high school and then developed. I went to England and I I was in the United States at the beginning of the world. I spent all the war times in England and I never learned German. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that uh, explains your uh, English uh, la yeah. la language yes, orientation. And yes. yes. I, 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 it's quite obvious that I'm most uh, uh, influenced by the English culture, eh? yeah. outside of, of course, of the Polish culture. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Now, uh, the, your conceptual development from that time, you have told me that you already, as a schoolboy, had very broad interests and you have been able to... Uh, uh, to uh, uh, Fuse this interest in, in, yeah. in geography. But how, when you look back on, on your work and the development of the discipline, how do you now see the way you uh, applied, let's say, the sense of place theory uh, immediately after the war? Uh, have you been thinking of uh, looking back on it? <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, uh, you see, the central place theory was criticized by the Marxists yeah. uh, after the war. So I, I had, in a certain way, to review uh, the, my relation to central place theory. And uh, uh, I, I would say I would never give, I have never given it up completely, but I found that it has to be developed. And this is only. Uh, any theory is really partial one, and I, I, uh, my present position is that you have to realize that uh, every theory gives you a certain aspects or defines certain phenomena. But in, if you study reality, you have to study it from various directions, and in studying of various directions, you see the specific phenomena or changes in various, from various point of view, and different aspects come into view. And if you are able to integrate them, then you develop a wider theory. But if you are not develop, you are not able to develop uh, this uh, integrated theory. You have to to accept it. The, the various theories may be equally valuable, or more or less equally valuable, in spite that there are certain, they cannot be directly connected. We, sometimes we don't see how they, mm -hmm. they connect together, but still, because they explain different aspects of, of mm -hmm. phenomena, you have to, to, to take them into account. Mm -hmm. But if you are work in an applied direction, as you have also been doing, then uh, one has to make a decision, make up one's mind. And uh, how do you see then the role of the various aspects when they cannot be fused into just one theory, which just gives just one well, answer? I, 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 you have to say that I am not able to, but there are those aspects which have to be taken into account. I think this again we come. You come to this element that you have to see phenomena in the environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But this means that... And theor theories have also the environment. Uh, what uh, you mean, uh, mental <laughs> yes, environment? Yes, yes. yes. And uh, at certain moment in the 60s, I, I was under this uh, uh, impact of a mathematization of efforts to mathematics. Yes. To, to, stack mathematical models and uh, I think uh, this one uh, I learned then from mathematics one element which I think uh, should be always a member that you have always in assuming certain concepts you have always to 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 define the basic assumption of that concept every concept or every theory has its assumptions mm -hmm. And if you forgot of those assumptions, you may misapply theory mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it works only within those assumptions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's true. And now, uh, uh, have you um, are you less enthusiastic now for this mathematization than in the sixties? So how how do you see uh, this? You know, you know, I. I I was always protector of this young geographers. One of the causes of my popularity among younger is that I always try to, to give them possibility to develop uh, the concepts. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think because of this kind of humanistic aspect of my education, I always was a little bit uh, Restrained. I was not never too enthusiastic, uh -huh. but I think they, they, this is a real input. Uh, the mathematization of geography was a, a significant step in the development of geography. Mm -hmm. It was not the final step. Uh -huh. There is no final step in the development of science. Uh -huh. So, uh, in a certain way, uh, my opinion is that there are two elements in, in this mathematical theory. One is that you develop more sophisticated methods of analysis, and once you master them, you use them almost mechanically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As I say, you never think how car functions, how motor functions mm -hmm. in your car when you drive the car. No. No. <laughs> you just know that you have to do certain things. Yes. Yes. But of course you can improve the, the, the motor, but then you have to go into development of new methods. So mm -hmm. there are two elements. Uh, uh, Bringing up the level of of, of the you of the method you use in analysis, and I think this was done in the last ten or fifteen years. Uh, younger geographers now are much better prepared for analysis than the older ones. Are. Also, yes. On the other side, you, you geography is not mathematics. And the, also there are some geographers who, who develop their mathematical interests very much, but there, there, are, there are always will be only few, and this will develop new methods. This is a different problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for our geographer, mathematization means uh, sophistication of method of analysis. But the, the real interests of geography are not in the method, but in phenomena. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, now this, um, I remember from uh, uh, 1960 then, when uh, the Polish School of Geography uh, first appeared, so, so to speak, for, for the outside, how impressed we were about its vitality and the new ideas uh, coming up and so on. Um, how do you see this? Um, uh, there must have been some historical background to this inside Poland too. You see, the problem is that uh, being not a very large nation and with language which is not very common, we had always to look to the other countries. To as We were good receptors of various, mm -hmm. of various thoughts, concepts from the other countries. We, uh, in spite of everything which is said about Poles, we are never national, very nationalistic in our culture. We are very open to foreign influences. Mm -hmm. And if I would criticize, we are sometimes to be too eclectic. Mm -hmm. We are too easy. We sometimes accept certain elements too easily. 
But uh, this, I, I think, the popularity really of Polish geography, international field, because it uh, depends on that that it is going in the via media. That is, it is sufficiently mathematical to be acceptable and interesting for the mathematical school. Yeah. And it's still too, is sufficiently traditional, uh, keeping to the. the evolution of a geographical so to be accepted to the geographers or more traditional approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, looking always for novelties, we have also quite acceptable for those who are looking for new directions. So this is a kind of, uh, uh, that is how I try to explain the position of, of Polish geographers, which in a certain way is, is really greater than we are. We are that we are in reality are, mm -hmm. are not as numerous and as strong as it seems sometimes. <laughs> the impression is perhaps a little bit superficial. Oh. Well, uh, I think that's an exaggeration. It's really impressive what you have been doing. But um, we have been speaking several times now about the uh, importance of looking at the context. And in, in your case, um, you have developed your theoretical outlook within a practical concept very much, haven't you? You have been much involved yes. in, oh, yes. in planning oh, yes. and so Yes, I, I, I always, there are two elements I always see, or try to see, the, the practical consequences of, of theoretical concepts I develop. And of course there is another element I came to research and from planning, that is, uh, from practical yes. applications. Yes. So in a certain way, my theoretical concept has grown out of the practice. Uh -huh. And I think it's, it's quite important, really, and I think for any scientist and for geographers, in, fact, in, in fact, it, it, it's very good to have some practice in planning. It, it widens horizons in a certain mm -hmm. way. I, I, in fact, I am quite worried now by the development. You see, the Polish geographers has established spec a specific position and authority in relation to, to, to the government and to the planning bodies as experts in the, in the field of, of physical planning. And I am a lit, little worried that the younger geographers now go to the university career or scientific career having no real practice. I think it's quite good to have a practice even in administration. Mm. Uh, would you would you recommend then, uh, recommend in a particular way of training students? It's difficult to say because always there is of course always practical problems. But I think few years in the planning offices would be very very good for young scientists. Uh, some time between the undergraduate study and the doctoral, perhaps? Yes, perhaps, or, or, or postdoctoral. He has to learn, you see, in, in collaboration with, uh, with planning and with, with practice, with application, in working on application of geographical research, you have to understand the other side. Mm -hmm. you, 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 ha you have to understand how they think, what, what are the methods of work, how, how, how they... Uh, develop their activities. And if you don't appreciate that, then there is kind of misunderstanding. You speak different languages. And of course, building bridges. The application involves building bridges between theory and practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but uh, it's possible. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as I say, especially in geography, I'm quite sure that, that Dealing with practical problems brings you, a, a, a shows you the importance of theoretical concepts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is no real opposition between no. one and another. No. Uh, have you found it uh, difficult to communicate with various uh, specialists in in the on the applied side, or how how do you feel? about the possibility to, to convey this broader integrative view when you have to deal with specialist engineers and perhaps architects and economists and sociologists and so on. 
every, every profession and every occupation has its own strong and weak side. So in a certain, this is again, we are coming to the problem environment. Yes, yes. No, but uh, you seem to have been fairly satisfied with the way uh, geography has been able to influence things in... You can in, never be satisfied with anything <laughs> to the end, but I, 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 I think uh, the, the problem is that geographers in Poland obta obtain spe specific position and, and the problem is they should keep it and improve. But, uh, this involves, of course, the, the next, the following generation. And this is one of the problems. I think in this, in this field, we feel now in Poland the consequences of the war. That is, we lack one generation. Oh, yeah, I can understand that. That yeah. must be a problem. And, and there, there is a, a kind of jump from the people who are in the 60s, 70s, and mm -hmm. those who are in the 40s. Uh -huh. No. Yes, there is one generation missing. But this means that uh, you can go on being active. The, the, yes, the generation is still needed. Yes, but at the same time it creates uh, specific difficulties in understanding. It does in what respect? Uh, the, the, the younger generation have their own problems. They have, in a certain way, their own culture. <laughs> and when the division is too large, it is not easy to... To, to, to understand, no, yeah. it, it, it hampers understanding. Of course, the, the, this intermediary would, would, in a certain, soften the differences. That's true, that's true. Now, um, when, when you entered uh, geography after the war, uh, Poland had very specific problems to, yeah. to to solve and I guess that also influenced the, the way you developed your concepts and so on since they have been developed so close oh, to yeah. practice. But how do we see this today now? The problems are different. It's not a question of building up something from the ground. It's, uh, would that influence, do you think, the way one should teach students now? Is other parts of geography more important now than Oh yes, yeah, the, 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 the importance of various elements changes, and uh, in, in t I don't teach very much now, except the, for the, the students who prepare the doctoral thesis. But in teaching, I w was always uh, thinking that a teacher has, in a certain way, is responsible for the position, for the of the perception uh, of the students when he will go into the world mm. and face the real world. And he has to prepare for him. And as the, the elements change, he is, is very important to, to show uh, in your teaching that things are not as fixed as it seems. That they, are, they do change and to show him how they changed in the past, so he will be prepared for changes in the future. Mm -hmm. That's very good. I, I, I think it's very important it is that, is that your students would not come out of your lectures uh, with a fixed concept. They, sh they should be able to adjust their concepts to the, to the conditions and to the developments we are taking place. And over which you have no real. Uh, you can direct them. You have to, in certain mm -hmm. way, act new, there are new situations. You have to accept. You, you can uh, try to 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 steer or to model them, but you are not completely free. And this 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 is kind of relation which I think is very important for anybody in life. Mm -hmm. Um, you had uh, or have in Poland work of a futuristic nature. I've heard of a Poland 2000 study. Have you been involved in that? What? Uh, Poland 2000. It's a, few, a futuristic uh, work for the development in Poland. Yes. 
Oh yes, yes, that is that is making prognosis. In fact, I, when I was in planning commission, I work on the long term. I was in charge of long term planning, uh, and uh, there, there, is, uh, there are, again there are these elements. You 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 see the future is not one way decided. It it it, it mm -hmm. has various possibilities, and it, you have to be quite flexible to see the. That, the, 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 mm -hmm. there is no. Uh, if you take today, it is it is there is no other alternative. But future has various possibilities. It, it partly depends on, on what you will do, but it depends also on other phenomena which you or you over which you have no mm -hmm. influence. So uh, the, the, this has to be pretty flexible. The approach has to be pretty flexible. It's no sense. Uh, I will give you an example. In, in the early 60s it was said that in 70s the problems of atomic power will be solved and the nuclear uh, energy, thermonuclear energy will be also almost solved mm -hmm. and there will be no problems. But after 20 years we see that atomic power is not so, mm -hmm. so one-way solution. There are still problems with us over which we which we are not quite able to deal and thermonuclear it is not even doubtful whether ever it will be mastered mm -hmm. as a source of energy for mm -hmm. men in ever in day, in day, in day mm -hmm. life. So uh, this shows the difficulty of, of making uh, mm -hmm. prognosis. You have to see it uh, you have to, 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 to always to see if in building a long-term plan, you have to make certain assumptions, and you have to be, you should realize always very strictly what are the assumptions, and the best way is, of course, to change, to to make plans for various assumptions, mm -hmm. and in a certain way, I always. A certain time, I say that you should look at the future as a kind of weather map. That if you can see that there is a, a, a weather front coming in, can you bypass it or not? There are certain changes which we are quite sure that will come. There are some changes which depend on, on very, very specific conditions. Too. And of course, those which are quite sure should be more take into account and those which are, which are very specific you have uh, you have to in certain way calculate the probability of their of their taking place mm -hmm. well our time is soon coming to an end i would like to ask you one further question i understand that you have a strong theoretical and conceptual interests and uh, what uh, do you hope to to do now as a retired professor with more time to concentrate on thinking? Uh, at the present moment I would like to, to, to finish or to develop this, this problems of migration. I think, I think uh, the, the, by, by introducing more sophistication in migration and analysis you can get much better uh, simulations or forecasts of the future. And this is one of the problems which, at the present moment, is is most absorbing for me. I see. I see. You see, I found out that we found out that in analyzing the immigration in in, in Poland that it is no sense of making conclusions from the net results of migration, because net results of migration are the sum of the various vectors of various types of migration. And it's sufficient for one type to change that the net result will be completely different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to, to study really these various types of migration and their interaction, interrelations. That is, and when you will do that, you will be much better, uh, it will be much easier for you to say what probably will take place. You have this, this one, for instance, this one element. There is a discussion of counter-urbanization in, in 
in the United States, yeah. in America. And uh, they say, the peop uh, in fact, the cities are losing their population, the people move to, to, to the outside. But the problem is, is it a result of that, that the people from the cities move to outside, or whether it is, it is as a result that not sufficient amount of people come into the city. Mm -hmm. Because the different people come into the city and different move out of the cities. There are always some movement out of the cities. Mm -hmm. But but they were in a certain way compensated by the influx of other population. Mm -hmm. And uh, and of course this is different people who move in and move out and they have different structure for instance. So uh, this is, I say, by introducing more sophistication in analysis of, of migration, I think we get better mm -hmm. knowledge of what is ahead of us. I noticed at the conference you have uh, time and again referred to a systems approach. Uh, have you in mind some wider applications to the whole urban question? Yes, the, the problem is what is the system? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, there, are, there are efforts. We have this commission on, on, on national settlement system yes. analysis. And there was a great discussion what are systems and the efforts to define it very strictly and narrowly. And I say, I rather warned against that. I say, we let us lose this, this, this concept system very not very clearly, we don't know completely what does it mean. The only thing which are quite sure that we are uh, uh, analyzing cis elements within interaction. That is, uh, the, uh, the, the, in a system, elements are not connected by, uh, by uh, uh, linear functions. The relation is not linear, it is more complicated. Of course, mathematically, it becomes that very difficult. Yes. But this is one of the elements we 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 really have to. I I, I think the, the mathematicians have to realize that social problems are not easy to model mathematically, and the real relation between mathematics and social sciences will be established when not only social sciences will borrow ideas for mathematics, but mathematics will develop, uh, start to get the ideas on mathematical problems or development for social sciences. Mm -hmm. the, the interaction should be both ways. Uh -huh. I think this happened in physics, yeah, but it did not happen yet in social not sciences. Yet. And that's what you look forward to. I, 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 am, I will not be able, I am too poor mathematician to develop in this way, but I think this is the, the future. Uh -huh. Well, I think that's a good message to, to <laughs> conclude this uh, conversation. I would like to thank you very much for, for letting me uh, ask these questions and I wish you well. I, I would like to have a uh, situation sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, why not? Thank you very much. <laughs>